Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the new installment of Carlton Says Real Talk. Um, I am here today. I'm very privileged to have the opportunity to talk to Miss China Upshaw. She is the reality. <laughs> she is the reality star of uh, We TV's LA Hair. And for those of y'all who do not know what LA Hair is about, it's about a, a group of stylists. They work with uh, celebrity stylist Kim Kimball. And these are, uh, it's about her and her life and also the, the lives of these stylists and how they interact with each other and their customers. Um, so I'm like, I'm really excited to have Miss China here. Hi, China. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing lovely this morning. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Like I said, I'm just honored and um, privileged to have the opportunity to talk with you. Um, like I said, I'm a big fan of the show. Uh, I love the show. Like I said, I'm going to be honest. When I first heard of it, I wasn't going to watch because I was just like, it's about hairstylists, you know, whatever. But when Mary, Mary, the Mary Mary finale went off and L.A. Hair came on, I was glued to the TV. And I was like, yeah, I got to check this out every week. So this is uh, a great show. And like I said, I'm, I, again, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to talk with you. So we're going to start off here. Um, just, you know, let the audience know a little bit about yourself, you know, where you grew up. You know, your siblings, family life, whatever. You know, you want to let us know about Miss China Upshaw. Uh, well, I grew up in Inglewood, California. Um, I went to elementary school. I lived there from probably two years old to the end of seventh grade. And then my family moved to Palmdale. It's like Courtville, Palmdale. It's about an hour um, away. And it's like the boonies, the country kind of far, um, moved there away from all my friends, had to pretty much start all the way over, and there wasn't really a lot of black people there, so, um, as fast as I could get back to LA, I came right back, and mm -hmm. I started beauty school when I was 17. Okay. I'm the oldest of two, I have one younger sister, um, and she actually is in beauty school now. Oh, wow. She's going to be my assistant, yes. Yeah. Oh, and, and not to not to give it away, spoiler alert, but she will be on the show. Oh, yeah, seven or eight episodes. So okay. She, my, my my sister is me without a sensor. Oh wow! Oh wow! Because you you seem like you don't have a sensor sometimes either. So I mean, that's gonna be crazy. <laughs> Wow! Yeah. Wow! This well, I'm like. A Scorpio, she's a Leo. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be bananas right now. Yeah, I like I said, I um, my mom actually is actually she has her own shop. She's an actual hairstylist too. So that was another appeal that I had to the show. Cause I said, ever since my mom got into the hair thing, you know, she brings all that home with her, and so it's just that I kind of can relate to the world a little bit. Cause like I said, my mom she just opened up her own shop, and so. She's dealing with all this business too, so it's 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 really cool to see you guys on television and also see it back here at home. So it's, it's kind of a real cool situation. Oh, does your mom watch the show? Yes, my mom lo watches the show. She loves it. <laughs> she loves it. She has it on DVR. Like she she kind of gets behind with TV stuff, but she keeps the shows on DVR and she she catches up. But she definitely loves the show. Shout out to you, my mom. What's up, mom? <laughs> Hey. <laughs> hey, all right, so yeah, you answered the question about, you know, you said you, you know, went to beauty school at 17, so you already talked about how you, you know, got into the business or whatever, how you got started. Now, how did you meet Kim? Oh, you know, Kim is a very well-known hairstylist in the entertainment business. Um, if I, I feel like anyone in any arena that they're in should definitely know the people, the top people that they're with, and I heard about her a while ago, and I actually just walked into her salon and um, applied for a position probably back in 2004 or five. That, that's how I met her, and when I actually went there to apply, she wasn't even there. I didn't even meet her until a month or so later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's really busy. Kim is rarely in the salon. Busy. Kim is jet setting all over the world. That's what's up. That's what's up. I, I I love Kim. Like I said, I know I watch the show and I'm just like, oh, I like this one. She's like real. She's real and she's just real down to earth and she just doesn't play any games. It's it's, it's really awesome. So I, like I said, I yeah, she's a she's a hard worker. She has a good ethic. She's built up this empire for herself. I mean, I 
is continuing to grow, and she is just like a genuinely nice person. Mm-hmm. And, and and that exudes over the TV. You know what I'm saying? Like that really exudes over the airways. Cause like I said, I I get that. I don't I don't know her. Never met her. You know what I'm saying? But I, I generally get that whenever she's talking to somebody or when she's dealing with you guys, I get that she's just really real and really genuine. And she wants the best for you guys. So, I... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> um, so, you know... Yeah. Go ahead. And I was going to say, yeah, which leads us to Angela, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely going to go there. We definitely going to go there. So, um, you know, like I said, with, like I said, L.A. Hair is definitely a big hit on television. So uh, how were you approached about being a part of the show? And like, how did you feel about being on a reality TV, um, television, a reality TV show? Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, um, I realized that a lot of people actually seek Hollywood and they go after it with like a vengeance headshots and they audition for shows and do all this. But I mean, I think it's going to hurt people's feelings even more when they find out that I didn't even go after this. I was literally sitting in my living room, just, I don't know what I was doing, figure, trying to figure out what my next move was, you know, blah, 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 and I got a phone call. Mm-hmm. That's how it happened for me. So after that, you know, I went for a series of interviews and on camera, you know, auditions, and I met with the people, and then it worked out. I mean, but but I've actually been working with Kim probably longer than most of the people on the show, except for Harry, I believe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not, but yeah, I've known Kim longer than all of them. So how? But how did? How did? It, 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 it's just funny that I they bring me in as the quote unquote new style. Right, right. Literally, I'm not. Right. <laughs> that that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but how did you feel about as far as being on reality TV? Like I said, I know reality TV has like a big stigma sometimes. So how did you feel about coming to that situation? Like, how is it, like, with the cameras all up in your face? Like, how is that? Like, how's that whole situation? Well, I mean, I feel, I don't feel really any different. See, this is the thing. Now I am in front of the camera more. Mm -hmm. But I, being a a hairstylist that works with celebrities, whenever you show up to jobs, you you pretty much need to be on point because at any given time you can show up to a job and there could be shooting a show. Right. A reality show, they could be shooting, like, you know, one of those other the networks have those diaries and behind the scenes shows mm-hmm. and they're always shooting something. I'm always on the red carpet. I'm always at the same events that I'm at now. The difference is just that, you know, the focus is me. But right. The camera, my mom's a photographer. I grew up all my life with a camera in my face. Not a video camera, but <laughs> a camera. So I'm very comfortable in front of the camera. I don't I don't feel the need to put any extra or be any different. Mm-hmm. I'm Right. But the but the difference is, is is what you see on the show is me edited. <laughs> it's what it, basically what it is. Gotcha. We, we shoot the show six days a week for one episode. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So six days a week for one episode and um you, you don't see all of that. Mm. You don't see all that. So when when it comes on and then it, and you see oh He's bossing ass me around. It's just like, okay, you know, you, yeah. We've been here much longer than this day. It, it looks as if this is my second day and I'm just bossing him around. Right. When actuality, it's really not. Right, right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know, like I know, because like I said, I'm... I'm, uh, I follow you on Twitter, and I, I know you follow me on Twitter and everything. I, I, I read the comments, 
So like people don't really understand, I guess the 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 truth behind you know everything that's going on because it does at first glance looks like you're just there and you're just like Anthony, get me some breakfast, you know, like that. It, it did kind of like you were just you walked in, bam, Anthony, get my food, and that was the end of that, you know. So we're not, and and I'm glad you said that because we're not really getting you know the full essence of what happened throughout the day. I didn't know y'all like take yeah. for six days. I didn't yeah. know that. Wow. And, and the thing with that episode, which, which every week for the show, we have to do a blog on the show. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to well, do my blog for episode four. But the thing with that situation with Anthony um, or in the breakfast, I um, offered to pay for his breakfast since he was going to pick up our breakfast. Mm-hmm. So what happened was when I went to the front of the salon to say, you know, what was going on, what happened to the breakfast, he actually forgot to pick up the breakfast. Mm. So Anthony didn't have, he didn't have any problems ordering the breakfast. He didn't have any problems ordering the breakfast because I was paying for his too. Mm. He didn't have any problems with that. And that's why when we were arguing and I kept saying him over and over and over again, give me an example of you bossing me around. Right. Do you notice that he did not have one? Right. Mm-hmm. How is that bossing you around? Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, so. We, I told you already, we Team China over here at Carlton Says. I already told you that, so. <laughs> we <laughs> definitely Team China, so we, I got you. Love it. <laughs> well, all right, well, now since we're talking about the cast members, let's go into each one individually. Um, You know, just tell, tell us how you feel about, you know, each of your castmates. And we're going to, I guess, start with Anthony since that's where we're at. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, with Anthony, um, Anthony is a Scorpio, just like me. We're two Scorpios, so we kind of have like a little love-hate thing going. But um, the thing with Anthony is I kind of understand his frustration because he's a hairstylist and now he's a receptionist. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, me coming into this situation new, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Until that moment where he walked over to me and told me I really do hair. Excuse me. I didn't know that. Right. No one told me that. Mm-hmm. And whether you're the stand-in receptionist or the real receptionist, you don't stand in if you can't completely do the whole job. Right. You can't have to do the job. Right. Yeah. I agree. So, I mean, as far as, as far as Anthony, I feel like, you know, Anthony just, um, he's a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's a little dramatic and come into a situation and you don't really know someone and you don't know how they are. Mm-hmm. You don't know really know how to be or how not to be. And it was just a case of us really not knowing each other. But um, he's cool sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you put that. I like how you put it. All right, uh, Dante. Dante, okay, yeah, Dante. Dante has those eyes, those, those light eyes. Everybody that I have come across with light eyes, they seem to want to put you in a trance with their eyes. They have the most intense eye contact, you know? Mm-hmm. You ever notice people with light eyes, they have the most intense eye contact. Mm-hmm. They want to hypnotize you with those eyes. My dad, my dad has light eyes, yes, I know. <laughs> and they give you the best eye contact. It's like they want, it's like they, I'm telling you, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like on True Blood when they uh, are, um, what do they call it? Yeah, they're uh, putting you in a trance. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Glamour, you yeah. So, so Dante has that with the clients, like with the women. He has the, the eye thing. Mm-hmm. He's always bringing them a cocktail. He's always cracking jokes. What I do like and admire about Dante in certain situations where I'm not really able to control my temper, he's able to turn it into comedy mm-hmm. and make it funny. Now, I don't have that. I, I don't have that feature, but I'm working on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, what about your boy Terry? Hmm. Okay, Terry. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> you know, Terry's older than the rest of us. So Terry, um Yeah. Terry Yeah, that was Terry. Terry, Terry. <laughs> okay. okay, Terry is kinda like, you know, say you know you're having like a house party at your house. Uh-huh. And- 
Terry Vaughn is going to come and be like, now, now, kid. Don't do that. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. And it's just kind of like, come on. Like, live a little. You know, get some excitement in your life. Get your youth back. Try something, you know. But, but in the end, Terry, Terry's a Scorpio, too, as well. Wow. You have a run-in with a lot of Scorpios, I see. Yeah, so, yeah, Terry's a Scorpio, too, but I do like Terry, and I appreciate him in the beginning, you know, coming over, trying to offer his constructive criticism if he, if he felt like, you know, that's what they do around that salon, but the thing is, I feel like, wait a while, see me first, right. see where I am, get to know me, right. because the same thing with him, like I was telling him, had I just walked over to him with his client, hey, are you going to do this, are you going to do this? He would have been like, oh, yeah, who the hell are you? Right. Why are you all in my space? Right. Go over in your area. You know, same thing with him. Like, clients don't want you to be standing over them, you know. Just, it, it, makes, it, look, it makes you look crazy. And, and as, as a client, I would feel like, you know, everything I said, did you, does this person not know what they're doing? Why is everyone over here training? They still have their training wheels on. Like, what is going on? Mm. So, I mean, I guess, you know, to other people, he feels like, you know, he, he should help and he should whatever, whatever, but this is not beauty school. I didn't ask for your help. Just stay over there with that thing. If I need you, I'll shot you out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are giving it to us, and I, and I appreciate it. Yes, yes. And um, last but not least, uh, Miss Angela. Because, uh, again, and before you answer, I want to say this. Like I said, in the last episode... Um, apparently Angela had got suspended or whatever because she she uh, went behind Kim's back and she did Eve's hair and, that, and Eve is Angela's client and so she got and Angela got suspended and then that's where on the show like I said China quote unquote is the new stylist coming into the situation and right. and um, China was using um, Angela's chair and so when Angela gets reinstated Angela comes back and she uh, wants her chair back and I thought it was crazy because. Angela is demanding her chair while you're in, while a client was in in the while you was doing somebody's hair, and I was just like, really, Angela, really? And like I said, Angela already put a bad taste in my mouth for the first episode. And like I said, and again, I know you said it's hard for us to judge because we're watching it, we're not on the show. But I'm I'm sorry, Angela is not a favorite of mine. I I, I really can't get jiggy with her. So um, I just want to throw that I just want to throw that out there before I before you answer the question about Angela because I didn't think that was cool how she came at you like that. That wasn't cool at all. Blah blah blah. I'm just like, are we watching the same show? Right. Are we watching the same show? Right. I don't. I don't. I don't. Um. Get that. But th- this is a, this is what I feel about Angela. I mean, yeah. Granted, yeah. I'm in the middle of doing a relaxer. You see me doing a relaxer, and you want me to just up and move. Like the management, the people that you obviously don't have any respect for, said to me, sit right there. Right. They told me to sit there as soon as I got there. So if they tell me to sit there, you can't come and veto what they said. Right. I'm sitting where they told me to sit. You have a problem with it, take it up with them. So you see when she went to Kim and she's all, yeah, you know, I'm from Chicago. I know how to remove a situation. Kim was like, go ahead. You're like, I'm a situation now, Angela, really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm so, not, mm mm-hmm. and you know they're hustling and they're, they're working hard to try to get what they want they have a dream they have a vision and they're going after it i can totally understand that right but the person who is helping you or who has helped you or is trying to help you any help that they have to offer if you're not open to receive it and listen to it why are you here right you say all this about kim you know kim did this Kim does that, she doesn't do this, she has this, she has these, she does blah, 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 and whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter what she says. If she, if, 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 if Kim says her rules are, I want you to come in every day and stand on your head and scream my name ten times. When you, when you come to work here and you agree to do that, you agree to do it. Mm-hmm. So you agree to do it, and that's it. Don't agree to do it and then complain and mope and tell everybody about it. You got a problem with it, but then you still come to show up to work every day. Right. Why are you here? Right. Because the door. Right. You can leave whenever you feel like it. You're free to leave. And if all these clients are supposed to... 
supposedly calling you, like she said, uh, one episode, or, uh, that if she called Kim every time one of her clients called her, her phone would never stop ringing. It's like, okay, so it sounds like you're just doing so well. What do you need Kim for? That's true. Go ahead and help me on the line. Right That's across true. the street. See what happens. <laughs> That's true. I 100% agree with you. I'm definitely yeah. in agreement. That's yeah. It's like it's it's all about being grateful and all about remembering your beginnings, you know, and being humble about it. That's and that's the thing I don't get from her. Like she's not humble. Like I, said, I respect the grind. I don't have a problem with the grind. I think you know that's cool. Being ambitious, nothing wrong with that. We all should gain and strive to do better. But it's how it's about how you go about doing it. And I just don't like how she goes about doing stuff. It's not it's not cool. But I don't want to yeah, go. On. I'm, I mean, that, 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 that's how I feel. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel. I mean, like you can you can see her drive. You can see it. You can see she wants it bad. She is a great hairstylist. It's just I don't. She's not going through the proper channels to get there. I mean, and then you're like, I'm up there. You're up here. I need to be up there. It's like, what are you talking about? Then you say Kim is forty. You, I'm twenty five. And Kim says she don't need naps. But you're twenty five. Why do you need naps? Talking about she's old, her her years are dwindling. If her years are dwindling and you're so young and vibrant, why are you the one to need all the naps? That's true. She'd be snoring it up in the in the little yeah, in the little washer thing. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, she's gonna she's she's gonna she's gonna see because uh, that karma is real. Mm-hmm. That karma is real. So while she's over here doing this to Kim. When she gets up there where she wants to be so bad, if she gets up there before she burns out, then please believe there's going to be another Angela that's coming up for her. Coming up for her. (laughs) Yeah. Well, with that said, I know you gave us a little sneak peek about your sister, you know, coming on the show later on. Is there anything else we can look forward to uh, with season, for the rest of season one? Um, yeah. You guys stopped at that uh, little altercation with Anthony or something. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's so it's more more altercations I see. Is it with with you? Are you are you, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> There's a twist. There's a twist coming up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. No, I didn't. That makes yeah, me mad. Only, yeah, it's only four left. We're four in, and episode five is on tomorrow. Yeah, wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow, okay. Well, um, since this is a blog about um, television, Carlton says, like I said, we talk about um, this different things that's going on on television, reality TV, and um, scripted. Um, what, are your, some, what are some of your favorite shows, um, and what are you watching right now, like if you are watching TV? Yes. Scandal. Oh my God, yes. I was like, I thought it was just six. I think it was just what six. Was it? it was just six. It wasn't that. Yeah, it was just six. The eight would have been, you know, better than what they gave. It was just six, and I was upset. Yeah, that was a super tease. Yeah. Shows mm-hmm. that I'm watching, mm-hmm. um, but I one of my favorite reality shows, which is kind of odd, is I love um, Paula Deen's cooking show. <laughs> 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 love, love, love her cooking show. Love, love that. So you get so, down. So you get down I, in the I, kitchen. I huh? So do you get down in the kitchen? Yeah, sort of, kind of. I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, okay. I, Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, 24 years. My dad's a fireman, Mm -hmm. paramedic. He got on the fire department the day after I was born, and he came home with this video. It was a a VHS tape. You know, that was a long time ago. Yeah. This VHS tape about how they kill the animals and all this stuff. I think I was six or seven. Hey, I'm permanently scared straight. I am not interested in deep or (laughs) poor. Wow, wow. 
Cool, cool. Well, like I said, again, um, like I said, China, we thank you um, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, be a part of Crossing Says Real Talk. Um, it was definitely a, a great opportunity and um, a privilege to, to chat with you. Um, and, I'm look, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I, I can't wait. I'm, like I said, my DVR is set to record tomorrow. And like I said, we are definitely going to be good to go to, to see what happens next. Um, so, th- again, thank you, Miss China, for, uh, for talking with us today. Hmm? Are you going to Essence Music Festival in New Orleans? No, I'm not I'm not going to Essence Music Festival. I won't be going this year. Oh, okay. Well I was gonna say, yeah, we'll be there. I will meet you. But I guess maybe I'll meet you, I'll meet you, I'll meet you soon. Right, yeah. yeah. We'll 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 make it we'll definitely make it happen. I I will definitely um as as Carson says get a little bit bigger, we'll try to, you know, get out to more events and you know, definitely we can, you know, meet and chat it up in person. So that'll be awesome. Well, nice chatting with, chat with you too. And guys, thank y'all again for listening to uh, Carlton Says Real Talk with Miss China Upshaw. I'll give a big shout out to my audio engineer, Robert McDaniel, for Studio 4002. And um, again, that make sure you guys tune in tomorrow. Well, this is what we'll be going on today. So I guess today, tune in to uh, LA Hair. It comes on Wee TV. It'll be on at 8 o'clock. And y'all can tune in for the drama that takes place in Kim Kimball's hair studio. Thank you guys. Y'all be blessed and we'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.